One of the many customs that Jews do on the holiday of Hanukkah, in addition to lighting the menorah and uh, eating donuts and uh, potato latkes, is also playing dreidel. What is a dreidel? A dreidel is like a top, and it has on it four letters. The letters of Nun, Gimel, Hey, and Shin. What is the reason why we play this game of dreidel on Hanukkah? On a simple level, on the level of Pshat, in the days of the Syrian Greeks, when the Jewish people lived in Israel, one of the decrees that the Yavanim, the Greeks, proclaimed against the Jewish people was that they were forbidden to study the Torah. As we read in the Al Hanisim, that Lashkicham Torah Secha, they wanted us to forget your Torah. And so the Jewish people took the children and they took them to the mountaintops. And the children there would study Torah with their teacher. However, to protect them from the guards and the soldiers that would go into the caves to find these children studying Torah, the children would have these tops, these games, and when the soldiers would come by, they would put away the Gemara or the, the Mishnah. In those days, they actually did not have a physical Gemara or Mishnah, which was established after the destruction of the Second Holy Temple. But they studied, they studied the laws, the Torah, Shebek Sav, the written Torah, and the oral law, they studied orally. So when the guards came by, they would put away the Svarim, if they had any, and they would take out the tops, and they would play games. And when the soldiers saw the children playing games, they would leave them alone and go away. After the miracle, we added letters to this game. And the letters that we added was Nun, Gim, Gimel, He, and Shin. However, everything in Yiddishkeit, everything in Judaism, has many, many layers of interpretation. And on the simplest level, it stands for Nes Godoyal Haya Sham. A great miracle happened there. And in Israel, they actually put a pay onto some dreidels, which means Nes Godol Haya Po, a great miracle happened here. Uh, the basic game is that, let's say you have five people playing, so each person would put in a, a peanut or a uh, nickel, and you would spin the dreidel. If your dreidel lands on a nun, nun stands for nothing, you get nothing. If it lands on a gimel, godol, you get the jackpot, you take all of the peanuts or all of the money. If you have a hay, you get half of the pot. Shin, you got, you got to put money into the pot. That's basically the way the game of dreidel goes. <coughs> so this is the pshat, the simple interpretation based on the story of the children playing taps during the decrees of the Yivanim. On a level of Remez, everything in Torah can be interpreted on five levels. What is the Remez, what is the hint of this game? We know that the Medrash tells us that when Mashiach will come, all of the holidays will be nullified. Besides the holidays of Purim and Hanukkah. These two holidays will continue even after the coming of Mashiach. It's explained, however, in Chassidus that it does not mean that the other holidays will literally be nullified, but rather the other holidays will become the minor holidays, and Purim and Hanukkah will become the major holiday. In other words, we're going to eat matzah on Pesach, and we're going to eat blintzes on Shavuos, we're going to hear the shofar on Rosh Hashanah, but the major holidays will be Hanukkah and Purim, because these are the holidays that we as the Jewish people, the nation of Israel, created because of our self-sacrifice, our love, and our commitment to God. And therefore, in the eyes of God, these holidays will be more special and more significant than the other holidays that God gave us and proclaimed to us in the Torah. So, what is the remez? What is the remez, the hint of the dreidel? 
The uh, Bnei Yisachar, the Ramban and others tell us that the letters Nun, Gimel, He, Shin can also be read as Goishna. Goishna is the city of Goshen. The city that Pharaoh gave to the Jewish people when they went down into the land of Egypt. Now Goishna has the gematria of 358, which is the same gematria as the word Mashiach implying that this game will be played not only now, but even after Mashiach comes. And on the contrary, in the days of exile, we play this game to remind us that there will be a future that will be brighter than today. There will be a time when the Mashiach will come and we will see a world of peace. The question has arisen, what about in Israel when they play the game with a pay? instead of a shin. So how do you work it out? So if you add up nun, gimel, hey, and pei, that equals 138. 138 is the gematria of the name Menachem. As the Gemara tells us that there are four names to the Mashiach, alluding to the four letters of Mashiach. The ches is Chanina, and then the yud is Yanai, and the shin is Shiloi, and the Mem is Menachem. And as the Medal of Prague explains that in truth, Menachem is the greatest of all the four names. And this is also alluded in the writings of the Alter Rebbe in Shaykh al-Vamuna, where he says that the first letter of each word encapsulates the entire world, word. For the first letter is the most powerful letter of the word. And therefore in the word Mashiach, the most powerful letter is the Mem alluding to Menachem, which is 138. That's the Rem is of the dreidel. What is the Drush, the homiletics? The exile of Yavon, the exile of the Greeks, was only one of the four exiles of the Jewish people. In truth, there are four exiles, and these four exiles are alluded to in the very beginning of the Torah. The Torah says that Beresh is Baralikim, God created heaven and earth. And then the Torah goes on to say, Vaha'aretz Haisa Soyu Vavayu. And the land was Soyu and Vayu. Soyu can mean void. And says the Medrish, this represents the, the uh, Malchus of Bavel. This represents the Babylonian exile. As it says in the book of Jeremiah, and I see the land, vihine toyhu, the land is void and desolate. Uvayu, what is vayu, the second word? Says the Medrash, this is the kingdom of Madai, of Persia. As it says over there in the book of Esther, vayavilu, lahavi es haman, and they rushed haman to come. The word vayavilu is the same letters as uvayu. And then, the Medrash goes on to say, V'choshech, the world was dark. This represents the kingdom of Yavon, of the kingdom of Greece, the Syrian Greeks. Shech Shecha, Inayin Shah Yisrael, they brought darkness to the eyes of the Jewish people with their decrees, forcing them to write on the horn of an ox. She'ein lachem chelkei ochelek balekei Yisrael. That they have no part in the God of Israel. They wanted the Jews to deny God as creator. And then finally the Pastor goes on to say, on the face of the abyss, this represents Rome, the worst of all the four exiles. They were so bad that there was no end to their abyss and their evil. And then it goes on to say, V'ruach elikim. However, the Spirit of God, Merachefes apnei amoyim, the Spirit of God hovered over the waters. Says the Medrash, what is the Spirit of God? Zur ruchoi shal Mashiach. This alludes to the Spirit of Mashiach. In other words, that at the very beginning of creation, God had a blueprint, and God had a plan. And the plan is that first the Jews will go into these four exiles. However, ultimately this will bring about the Ruchoi of Mashiach, this will bring about the coming of Mashiach. Why Ruchoi? Because it says, pertaining to Mashiach, V'nocha alav Ruach Hashem. And upon him will be planted the Spirit of God. 
It's interesting to note why at the very beginning of creation that we talk about the Mashiach. And we explained this once in the past with a mushroom with a parable that when you go to a contractor and you ask him to build a home, he says, first I need a blueprint. So therefore you first go to the architect. When you go to the architect, the architect says, what kind of a home do you want? Do you want one floor, two floors, three floors, one golf course, two golf courses, three tennis courts, four pools? What do you want in the house? In other words, before I can make you a blueprint, I need to have a goal of what kind of a house you want. And therefore, when the Torah talks about creation, at the very beginning of creation, the Torah says, that God had a goal, he had a purpose in creation, and this goal and this purpose was the Ruch HaYishah Mashiach, the spirit of Mashiach. In other words, God wanted to create a world of peace and justice and harmony where all the nations of the world will live together. And the Baal Turim says that the words and the Spirit of God will hover over the waters is the same exact gematria as the words Ruchai Zuhi Ruchai Shel Melech HaMashiach. So that is the Drush. What is Soid? What is the esoteric level? So you find again in the writings of the Nei Yisoschar that he says the four letters that we discussed earlier on the dreidel the Gimbal and the He and the Shin and the Nun, these four letters alone represent the four different types of exiles. First you have, he says, the Gimbal. The Gimbal is Guf, stands for body. Nun stands for Nefesh, which is soul. The Shin stands for Seichel, which is intellect. And the He stands for Hakoel, everything. And he goes on to explain the following. Now first you have the exile of Bavel, the Babylonian exile. They came along and they destroyed the first holy temple. And because of that, there were no longer sacrifices brought. And the Torah says, when you bring a sacrifice, that it will be v'nefesh, a soul that will bring a sacrifice. Implying that they took away the soul of the Jewish people, because they could no longer connect with these sacrifices. That's the nun of the dreidel. And then you have the gimel. The gimel is guf, the body. That is Madai, that is Persia. For they had a decree, laharig or laabed, to God forbid, to eradicate and destroy the bodies of the Jewish people. And then you have the exile of Yavan, of Greece, which is the shin for Seichel, the uh, Greeks were very philosophical, very intellectual. What did they want to do? They wanted to do away with our intellect. They wanted us to forget about your Torah God. They wanted to remove the intellect from the Jewish people. And then you have Rome, which is the He, which is Hakel. Rome embodied all of these three previous exiles all in one. First, they destroyed the Holy Temple. They removed the sacrifices. And that is the nefesh, the soul. Then they massacred the Jews. That is the guf, the body. And then they wanted to do away with our Torah. And that is the seichel, the intellect of the Jewish people. So this is the dreidel, the soid, the esoteric meaning behind the dreidel. What is the Hasidic interpretation of the dreidel? So we find that Hasidus asks the question, why is it that the Jews went into exile in the first place? What is the purpose of exile? Why are we here? And Hasidus says that the word Shem, which is the shin of the dreidel, there, Shem there, means the level of klipa, the level of impurity, and the level of unholiness. And it represents a, an object of concealment that is so deep that you cannot see the end of the abyss. In contrast to the word ze, this, this is maribetz boiv oimeze, you're able to point on it because you can see it. In contrast to sham, there is something that I cannot see, it's so far away. 
So the word Sham represents a place that's very far that you cannot see. Pertaining to the first exile, the exile of Egypt, we find that God tells Jacob, who was afraid to go down to Egypt because he had to leave the Holy Land of Israel. And he was concerned that his children might be there for a while. So God tells Jacob, do not fear. And he says to him, Kiligoi Godel Asim Chasham. Sham, over there in Egypt, I will make you into a great nation. And therefore, you should go down to Egypt. Because there in that abyss, there Sham in that darkness, Sham in that exile, you will become great. And that is really the objective of Golos. The objective of exile is Yerida L'Tzorah Chaliyah. That we go down in order to go up. And the more we go down, and the darker the abyss, the greater the return, the greater the redemption, and the greater the light. And that is the purpose of all of these exiles. Each one of these exiles was diametrically opposed to a different aspect of the Jewish persona and the Jewish perspective and the Jewish existence. And by defeating the exile, by overcoming that destruction, we were able to rise up to a much higher level than before. And this is what we find in the Torah portion, this Yehuda, Shalach Goishna, it says, and Jacob sent down Yehuda to Goshen. As we said earlier that the four letters of the dreidel spell out Goishna, and that Jacob sends Judah down into Goshen. Why does Jacob send Judah down into Goshen? Because, as Rashi tells us, to build a yeshiva there, to build a school for the children in Egypt. In other words, Jacob understood that the way to transcend exile, even while you are in exile, is through the fact that the children of Israel will study in the yeshiva. And by being in the walls of the yeshiva, they will be protected from the negative influences of the exile of the Gauls. And therefore we find that when we talk about the life of Yaakov, it says, Vayechi Yaakov. And Yaakov lived Be'ez Mitzrayim, in the land of Egypt, Shvayasishana, 17 years. And says the Balaturim, 17 is the gematria of Tov, good. In other words, that the best years of Yaakov was where was in the land of Egypt. The famous story of the Tzemach Tzedek, he asked the Alter Rebbe, how could it be that uh, Yaakov Avinu lived the best years of his life in Mitzrayim in Egypt, not in Eretz Israel, not in the Holy Land of Israel. And to this the Alter Rebbe replied, there's Yehuda Sholach, the son of Goishna because he first sent Judah down into Goshen to build the yeshiva. And when Jacob saw his children studying Torah and transcending the space of exile, that brought him the greatest nachas and that brought him the greatest joy. And that is the idea of Yehuda going down, because Yehuda represents the four letters of God's name, the Yehud Yud and the He and the Vav and the He, which allude to the four exiles of the Jewish people. And with Yehuda, you have the ability to transform all of these negative exiles into positive light and energy. So this is the, the dreidel, the four sides of the dreidel that we spin around. However, the top of the dreidel has a stem, an antenna, in which we turn the dreidel, implying that God is the one that causes all of this to happen. He is the causer of all causes. And nothing happens on its own. On the contrary, it was predetermined from the very beginning of creation for the Jewish people to go into exile. And knowing that this was part of God's divine plan allows the Jew to rise above and to become in control of his own exile. And not to be deterred and not to be overwhelmed, but on the contrary, to take the, the ox by the horns and to take the exile by the stem and to rise above all of these difficulties and assume new heights and new greatness. So therefore, even though you have the four different exiles on the four sides of the dreidel, the one who is on top are the Jewish people, implying that in the future, as the Navi tells us, 
Az epoch amim that all the nations will be transformed and they will come to serve God with one tongue and they will stream to the holy temple and serve God with one religion. For no longer will there be those that deny God or those who believe other religions outside of God. But as the candles of Hanukkah remind us that the first thing that God created in the world was light. For when there is light, there is clarity. And therefore, by lighting all eight candles of Hanukkah, we bring the world to a new level of clarity, and we will truly dray the dreidel. We will turn the dreidel. And when you turn the dreidel, you don't see any of these letters. You don't see any of these nations, because it becomes one world. It becomes one nation. It becomes one nation under God. And so we hope and pray that this Hanukkah will be the last Hanukkah of exile and the first Hanukkah of redemption, and to see how Goishna will truly be transformed into the Mashiach, and furthermore that we know that the words Nachosh, which Nachosh also is the snake, the snake that brought about the sin, has the same gematria as Mashiach, and also Hashem Melech, Hashem Moloch, and Hashem Yimloch, God is king, God was king, and God will be king, also has the same gematria. So we'll transform the first sin that came about in the Garden of Eden that brought about death to the world. And we will transform this by turning the dreidel, turning around the whole purpose of creation and bring it to new heights. And then the entire world will see that God is not only Lord now, but God was always God. And God will always be God. Hashem Yimleich, the Olam Va'ed. Amen.